everybody, Glenn, Red Dog Motorsports. And today's video is going to be on the vehicle you see behind me. It is called the Wangler. It belongs to a friend of mine in the wheeling group. They brought it to me as a roller. You may have seen it in the background on several of the videos. Uh, it's been around the shop for about a year. It's been done for a while. I first filmed it all before I really got into doing the YouTube thing. I was planning on doing it and so uh, the video just uh, has been sitting and now we're trying to get it out and do a series on it so I thought we would do a walk around on the video on the vehicle as it sits now and that will give a better explanation of the series going forward showing the work that we did do to it so let's get started the Wangler started out I believe it's an 88 YJ or something like that it's a, it's a YJ is what it originally started out as and he has gone through several reiterations of it. But at this point, it has been V8 swapped. It's an older Gen 1 block. Nice little roller motor. Has a serpentine belt system on it. We have put a PSC uh, steering pump system on it. It does run the stock vacuum booster. Uh, I've got a Corvette master cylinder on it. Uh, we did that to increase the master cylinder bore size. Just runs a simple block hugger into a two, uh, a true dual exhaust going back two and a quarter inch, I believe is what it was. It is a propane rig. I set it up uh, when it came. We didn't have any of the mounts for the propane tanks, uh, so we set those up. Got them welded in, got a dual system here. The interior, we did the dash, all of the dash work, uh, mounted the seats, got the seat mounts done. Um, battery mounts, uh, did those here in the shop. It runs a uh, SM465 four speed. Uh, so it's got the real deep granny low. It runs a Dana 300 transfer case that is twin sticked. No doubler, anything like that. Uh, the drive shafts, <laughs> there's something I basically cobbled together out of some parts he had. I've got a 1310 on the front. Uh, this is a combo 1350 setup. I think it's 1350 at the axle, 1310 at the transfer case. Runs a 14 bolt rear with a spool. Runs a, what are these, a 39 inch? They're the LTBs, that's what they were. Runs sway away coilovers. Uh, we did rebuild those. The, uh, are running the carbon two inch bump stops. Has a four link rear, double triangulated. We've got propane, uh, put the propane hat here, and the propane hats under here, obviously. The mixer's here. I just run something simple for a overflow can for the radiator. Runs a Chevy Dana 60 front. Full hydro steering. A spool as well. Uh, uses the TMR mount for the PSC. Uh, that was something that we put in there we rebuilt the front end for him or at least installed all the parts i should say so it wasn't really a, a full rebuild we did some of the tube work in the front uh getting all of this this was none of this was here uh the winch plate wasn't here uh none of the grill or anything was here when i started on it uh the light mounts are something that we did you can see the grill's just a shell all of the backside, I cut it all out. We did the radiator mount and we did the shroud. So just something nice and simple. It works good though. Uh, the front's also double triangulated by the way. Didn't do much. I didn't set any of the suspension up other than setting the height of the coilovers and getting bump, bump height set, all of that stuff. Uh, as far as all the link mounts, all of that stuff was already there when I got going on it. Um, all I did was finish up a little bit of the tube work uh, that was unfinished, uh, like this bar. 
a support bar down here. Uh, we put something in here to, to support the corner. This kind of just support work. Just little stuff like that that need to be done. Other than the interior, that's about all we did. But it's enough to make a couple of videos and just give you an idea of, of what we're putting out on occasion. It's always fun to finish these projects, getting back on the road. So I hope you enjoy the series and look forward to uh, showing you more. So I have cut out the strut tower brace. Uh, it used to be right here. Uh, we're going to move it up to here. Um, in order to do so, I'm going to have to cut off uh, the pieces on the ends here and make new ones that are a little bit longer uh, just because you know this is going at an angle like this and so it's a little bit further apart uh, right now I'm working on grinding off what's left of the tubing um, then I'll get it smoothed out uh, right now this is just roughed in with the grinder I'm gonna try to get in here with a pad and clean that up a little bit uh, you can really clean those up if you got time uh, which I never do uh, when you get in here with a file and boy you can make that just absolutely look like it was never there but I'll try it with the prep disc and see how we go uh, but for right now uh, we'll get back into it and I'll get you an update as we get a little farther over to uh, my other grinder with the pack. All right guys, quick update. Um, as you saw, I grabbed, uh, I worked on it with the, the discs, the in, or my flap disc first. I uh, use a pretty aggressive compound. I was using 40 grit uh, and then I moved to a green pad, which is medium grit on my uh, disc, my three inch Rolock. And then I went to a flat file and got most of the rest of it out. Um, definitely feels a lot better. It's still not perfect, but it'll at least pass muster now. Um, but you can see this is the side I finished. Um, doesn't look too horrible still some lines in there and stuff it's not completely polished um, and we've got a couple of little divots down here uh, but all in all not horrible um, over here uh, this side has not had the filing done to it i've only polished it and you can see lots of little high spots low spots um, i'll hit it with the file and it'll stand up a lot better i'll, I'll show you again but uh we'll get a lot of those out with the file and then uh polish it up with the flap disc all right that gives you a better idea all of the shiny spots are low uh, the other spots are high I'm just using a fine flap file um, and just rolling it across uh, the tube uh, just like this just nice light pressure just keeping it going and it'll smooth it out um, takes a little bit of work, but you can get it really nice, especially if you really want to spend some time with it. Um, I'm usually too lazy to spend uh, too much time doing it. Uh, I usually get it close to the disc, flap disc, and the, the roll locks, and then call it good. Cover it up with paint. For rock crawlers, that's fine. Uh, if you're going to be doing hot rods or something, obviously you want it to be a little bit better than that. So, um, always good to practice the skills learn something new get it going but uh, we'll get back on it i got the uh filing done so this side uh it's not looking too bad uh came out pretty good actually um took care of a lot of those high spots uh, as you can see so looking much better all right so now i need to cut these ends off of the support bar need to cut these right here on both sides I want to clean these up. You can see we got a little bit of a gap, so I want to clean those up on the, the belt sander. 
um, see if I can't get a little better shape on them. Uh, and then we'll make some longer bars here, some longer tubing uh, to fit the additional length. Um, and that'll be that. Uh, then it'll just be a matter of, then I'll just have to weld it in and that part will be finished. We can put the shocks back on it and move to the next one, which will be mounting the radiator. Did a pretty nice job. Cuts it off. Now I'll just use the grinder to get the rest of that off. Um, probably have to take the bolts out of it. So just using flap disc and 40 grit. Uh, nothing big. Alright, so she's good enough for getting the government work done. We'll get that bolted up, flip it over, and do the other one. Alright, now let's get these cleaned up. I have an old Hitachi combo sander. The disc part's blown up. It's trashed. That's uh, so all I've got to this. I'm going to build a big one, a uh, big belt sander. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it, though. Looking a little better, getting a better shape to it. Um, a little more even. That'll be better. Normally I would do this. Normally you do this before you put it down here, but or put it on here, but they didn't do it, so. That's a lot better than what it was. Um, it's kind of hard to keep it square. Things wobbling all over the place because it's on just the two bolt heads. But uh, much better. Um, it'll look halfway decent now when it's painted. Alright, so now we need to start measuring and cutting some tube. So what we're going to do now, this is all cleaned up. Um, so now we'll measure uh, the distance of this from here to the other end. Get a total measurement which we can do right now. So my total measurement, including both flanges, is right at 26. This is 32 and a half in between. So 32 and a half minus 26 is six and a half. I need to split that in two, three and a quarter. And I need to actually cut my tubing a little bit longer than that. Um, because I need to account for the overlap when we are profiling it uh, to get onto the, the to profiling for the tube. So I need to cut myself two pieces at about three and a half inches long, maybe a little, maybe three and three quarters long, and then I'll grind it by hand. For this, I'm not going to use the notcher to do the notches. I'll just use a grinder to do them by hand. We should be able to get pretty tight with that. Alright, so I cut this on the bandsaw uh, off camera. It is, I didn't wrap tape or anything around it to make it perfectly square. I'll clean that up a little bit on the belt sander now, chamfer the edge, then we'll make another cut. Uh, I didn't worry about how square this was being exact because I'm going to be notching that end anyways. Uh, so it's going to end up being slightly off anyway since I'm doing it by hand. All right, so there we go, cleaned up, nice little chamfer on it. Uh, the chamfer ends are gonna go up against the flat plate, uh, just like that. Uh, it just gives me a nice place to put the root of the weld in. Um, then the other end will be our, uh, I'll be cutting it off right here, three and three quarters. And then this end will be my notched end. So what I'll end up doing is I'll probably notch one of these, I'll weld it to the cross brace, and get it in and then I'll walk the other one in. I'll, I'll get it roughed in and then just slowly work it in until it fits in uh, just nice and tight. Uh, and then we'll be able to weld it in uh, without any gaps. Alright, so we got them both done. They're even the same length. 
Oh, imagine that. <laughs> All right. So these will get welded to here. So to get welded just like this, we'll have to center that up. Oh, it should be fun. But we'll get these centered, eyeballed. Since I don't have any lines, but it's not too bad. I can do it like that. Get it set like that. We'll get some tacks on it, uh, and then go from there. Tacks or welds, one of the two. Although that's probably going to be tomorrow. The next morning. Had a bunch of back and forth uh, with grinding, test fitting, grinding, test fitting, grinding, test fitting, etc. So let me show you where I'm at. Uh, right now, we've got the sides pretty close, not too bad on the front. I need to open this one up just a little bit, so I'll take away some of the top and some of the bottom, and that'll let that slide in. Uh, right now, this is pretty tight, um, so I'm not quite sure that I'm satisfied with that. What I may do is add some tin foil in there to act as a little bit of a shim. Um, that way I know once I've got it fit in there that everything's going to bolt up nicely once I finish weld it in. That way there's just, you know, that ten thousandths, that thousandths, whatever, um, to make it all fit. Uh, you can see here on the back side, just a little bit of a gap. Uh, we'll profile that in a little bit more and everything's going to fit in nicely. Um, you know, doing it by hand, it's really, I try to take about half of the distance that I think I need each time. Uh, so if I need to take off an eighth, I'll take off a 16th and then I'll take off a 32nd and just keep walking that distance down. Uh, because if you try to too big of a movement, a lot of times if you're slightly off on an angle or something, all of a sudden you're way off and then you just, you end up with big gaps. And while, yeah, you can fill them welding and, and whatnot, and, and it works, uh, and certainly I've done it. I, I can't say I haven't. Um, it's just better the tighter fit you get um, to do it like that. So uh, we'll continue moving on with this and keep going. <music> closer I have got it the uh, the pieces that go to the shock towers welded up at least mostly I need to I'm um, letting it cool right now um, I'll show you what I did but so I welded all of the areas outside of the bolts but I left it bolted and clamped because as you weld that circle it'll cause that piece to cup you know and it'll draw these edges up um, enough to give it a good bow in that kind of bracket by leaving it bolted letting it cool it'll remain flat and then i'll undo the bolts finish weld those other two pieces uh the other two sections then i'll put it in the rig weld it to the tubing uh, which i ended up having to clean up uh, underneath here i got some cleanup that i had to do uh, they, whoever was working on this before, did not weld inside here. So I'll get that done while I'm doing the welding. And then the, uh, the brace will be in and we can move to installing the radiator. Uh, right now I'm gonna take a quick break. 
uh, while this is cooling and then we'll get back at it all right guys i got it uh in the rig we're getting ready to finish well that it cooled off um so as you can see we got nice tight gaps front and rear uh, same with this side we're all nice and cleaned up so now i'm going to what i decided to do I'm gonna weld these in, and then once it's all welded in, then I'll unbolt and remove the center section. With the bolts removed, that will allow me to finish weld uh, down here where the bolts are at, uh, and then it'll be done. I'll be able to remove my tinfold uh, spacer. It should slide in and out pretty easy. And then uh, that'll be done, and we can move to getting the radiator installed in this area here. Uh, then once the radiator's installed, we'll work on the grill and a front bumper. Right now, this is just a placeholder, uh, just to keep the frame rails done or separated like they're supposed to be. So uh, let's get at it. Quick update, uh, we've got it welded in. Um, for the most part, everything went really well for me. Um, kind of a contortionist welding. I'm um, trying to get all the angles with the motor and stuff in there, but uh, take a quick look. So you can see, we got it done. I got underneath these, oop, hot. Got underneath those welded too. So, now we can put the coilovers back in. I can remove the tinfoil once it cools a little bit. Uh, we'll clean up all the uh, little dingleberries from the weld splatter and uh, maybe touch up some sharp edges on the sides of those uh, tabs. And then uh, that's done. And we can move on now to the radiator mount, uh, getting it planned out. And then on to bigger and better things. Thank you. 